Welcome back to 12T Health. I'm Dr. Derek De Silva. A whopping 75% of Americans are thought to be living with gum disease. Most allow it to go untreated because they don't even know that they have it. What they also likely don't know is that gum disease carries with it other severe health risks. Fortunately, though, it can be treated with the use of advanced laser dentistry. Here to talk about it is Dr. Eric Linden, a periodontist in Woodcliffe Lake who specializes in laser periodontal surgery. Thank you for joining us Thank today. Thank you very much. So let's get right to this because we have a diagram here of healthy gums and abnormal gums. We're going to bring it up and could you please just comment on this as we see this? Just let us know what's going on here. On the left side you're looking at healthy gum tissue where gently there's a periodontal probe right into the healthy gum sulcus or the gingival tissue and on the right side you'll see the instrument going a little bit deeper add to the level of the bone loss and you can see chronic gum, uh, gum inflammation as well. So what what is the significance of this? What is the significance of somebody having periodontal disease? If periodontal disease is not controlled and it progresses on, it can cause other systemic illnesses, it can cause tooth loss, it can cause infection in the mouth, cause drifting of your teeth, it can cause tooth loss, and there have been associations with many, many systemic diseases that are very, very much prominent now. And let's get into that. What are some of those systemic diseases that, that, that we have and they're on the screen right now? Okay. Well, heart attack, the strong association between heart attack and heart disease. Um, there have been associations with rheumatoid arthritis kidney disease, uh, pregnant women need to be aware of preterm uh, birth uh, babies, diabetics, stroke victims, Alzheimer's, and a number of other medical connections. How is that connection made? If you've got periodontal disease, how does it affect diabetes and Alzheimer's and preterm issues and heart disease? How does that happen? It's a very complicated uh, situation. There are many studies that look at different factors that go into it. Uh, the first thing is the bacteria that's below the gum line that's causing the gum disease and the periodontitis are very similar to the bacteria on the uh, coronary valves and the coronary arteries. And the American Academy of Periodontology and the cardiologist have formed many, done many studies together to correlate the connection between the two. Are there things that people can do to monitor this themselves? The best thing that a patient can do is see their periodontist or their general dentist and get a thorough diagnosis of their condition, have a good set, a thorough set of digital x-rays taken, and have a comprehensive exam done. At that point, then we can make certain conclusions as to what the appropriate course of treatment. Uh, at that point, also, we can probably take most of our patients, about 85% of our patients now that we used to use traditional surgery on, we're able to utilize the laser protocol. Mm -hmm. I, I, would, I would imagine that you go from your general dentist to the periodontist, right? I mean, is that the logical sequence? It's usually the logical sequence, but today with the internet and with uh, more patient awareness, we're seeing more direct referrals, patients coming directly to us, because more and more people are hearing about the laser approach to treating gum mm -hmm. disease. So. I mean, you, you led right into that for me. What, what laser approach to treat gum disease? What do, I mean, let's let me just talk about a little bit of prevention first. Is it flossing? Is it brushing? How do we prevent this? The most fundamental way to prevent it is brushing, flossing, good oral hygiene, and regular visits to your dentist. Um, beyond that, there are other situations beyond your control: genetic situations, mm -hmm. diabetics, systemic illnesses, stress. A number of menopause, hormonal changes, mm -hmm. a lot of things affect it. Okay, and we have a, an animation here of what you do of, with the laser and exactly what's going on. So if you would just tell us what's happening sure. here as we bring this animation up. What, with a patient anesthetized, they do not feel the step. We're using the first step with a very, very small laser tip, that's, uh, the thickness of three human hairs. We go in and we just direct the laser on the inside of the gum tissue just removing diseased tissue and selectively removing the diseased and bad bacteria. As you can see, we're forming, as this, this comes out of the pocket, we're then going to the next step, which will probably be showing us uh, root preparation just to remove the calculus and all the bacteria below the gum line that's attached to the tooth. Mm -hmm. At this point, you can see the ultrasonic piezos, as they're called, removing all the calculus and flushing it out of the pocket. Mm -hmm. And once this is removed, we go in for the last step with the laser, which is the hemostatic step, which forms a fibrin clot where the gum meets the tooth. And this forms a seal over the gum and the tooth, which mm -hmm. allows your body cells to form a seal and allow connective tissue 
attachment to the root surface. Maintenance, once this is done, what happens? After this is done, um, we usually follow up the patients in the office, usually one week after it's done, and then several weeks thereafter, and then they're on a maintenance plan, usually every three months. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank Great you. information. Thank you.